afternoon and welcome to De De Watar, a party line talk show. I'm your host, Lynn Stacy, and today um, my guests are from Animal Protection, Deidre White, as well. We are joined by Ron Sky. Welcome to the show. We're going to be talking about uh, animal control law. So I guess maybe uh, a good starting place would be just a little bit of a history on on our law, where it came from, and uh, we're really going to dig archives because I'm sure most people don't even know this. Probably be a great trivia question. <laughs> I guess a little bit of history is this: the law was originally uh, uh, made back in 1964, and it was called the D2 law. Uh, and there was some amendments uh, uh, through the years, and the the most recent one, which is still a long time ago, was in 2002. So it's been some uh, 16 years since the law has been revisited. And uh, we all know the, uh, uh, I guess, the concerns that community members have and the complaints that we receive through uh, public safety and also through animal protection on uh, uh, dogs being loose and dog bites and uh, concerns about uh, specific breeds of dogs and so on. So um, last year there was a submission made by uh, Chief Carl Horn uh, to the KLCC to have the uh, animal control law reviewed. So uh, in December of last year, um, we struck a little group to start discussing these things, and uh, um, the uh, public safety unit was mandated with looking at revising or amending the, uh, the current law. So from April to August of this past year, we struck a little working group uh, to look at the uh, statistics over the courses of the years in relation to how many calls the animal protection had received, uh, dog bites, uh, uh, cat issues, wild animal calls, domestic uh, horse, livestock, things all, you know, and what, you know, what kind of statistics we had in relation to that. So in September of this year, we went back to council after we'd gathered all that information and um, we had made some recommendations in an informal council discussion on what we thought the purpose and the scope of the law would entail. Uh, so for us, we thought that the purpose would be obviously this continued community prote- uh, complaints, you know, that we had to address. Um, the law is obviously outdated. And it doesn't affect the current uh, responsibilities, if you want, of, uh, of domesticated animals or owned by individuals. And obviously to address key community concerns from the public. So what we came back or recommended to council as a scope was, was that we needed to amend the provisions of the current animal control law. Uh, we need to provide additional sections to the law that identified owners' rights, obligations, and responsibilities as pet owners. Uh, develop a regulatory section uh, that identifies the authority of the animal control officers, or if you want to call them community compliance, o- compliance officers down the road, uh, with uh, maybe an enriched or enhanced enforcement capacity. Um, and to review the recommended penal uh, recommendations or fines, if you would, in relation to uh, the regulations, and to develop a statement of offense form, if you would, that the um, animal control officers could use or inspectors could use uh, instead of formalizing it like with a, a court process. It would almost be like a ticket, a, oh, okay. a, a ticketing system. So it would be um, uh, on the spot, if you would. So that was the scope that we recommended to council, and uh, we went back for uh, a formal presentation in October of this year, October 22nd, and council approved the purpose and the scope uh, on what we had made as far as the recommendations were concerned. Uh, So we got the green light to move ahead. Uh, And then during that that time, we also developed uh, um, kind of a a communications plan on things that we we knew we had to do as far as trying to get community input and trying to do as much outreach as possible. Um, so with that, I guess I'll, I'll let Deidre jump in there, and that's, that's her forte. <laughs> I, I, I guess in Ron's statement, and I'm going to ask this right away, uh, Deidre, in terms of calls and things, what are some of the statistics? I mean, lately it's been uh, a lot more uh, pigs and cows and horses, but, right, you know, right. I, I'm just curious. Uh, <laughs> if you're paying attention to social media, yes, you are seeing a lot more incidences in regards to um, pigs. Right? Yeah, pigs and I've seen a lot. They'll show yeah. up on the K103 page, yeah. the RCA Bridge page, yeah. and everybody gets a kind of a, a chuckle. But then at the same time, they do regard it as a real safety issue because it could be quite dangerous if you know it runs in the middle of the street, oncoming traffic. Uh, so it's quite the issue. Um, So yes, we did do our statistical uh, data uh, gathering over the uh, 
over the course of uh, a few months, and that was part of the presentation that we had made to council. Um, so just in regards to, uh, you know, uh, calls, um, we had in the course of three years, we had gathered data over the course of three years um, leading up to March 31st, 2018. Um, so we had uh, 884 calls in regards to dogs and cats, just stray dogs and cats. Uh, your wildlife calls are 330. Farm animals are 27. Uh, after hours, that way it would be included those particular uh, calls as well or 425. So, and then we had the total amount of calls we've received that includes requests for traps, requests for assistance, uh, my dog's missing, et cetera, is 1,666. Wow. That's over a three-year period um, within animal protection, yes. I guess in just saying that, I think one of the things I've just come to realize, usually when I have you on the show, it's usually about dogs. Yes. <laughs> but the the job of animal protection is so much bigger than that because the focus seems to be on the problem with the loose dogs. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 part of it is it's within a public safety realm, you know, we're looking at animal control, animal protection. And uh, it, it seems like more and more people within the community are also um, uh, going back to almost not a subsistence living, but some sort of it, you know, so they have... Uh, cows, they have pigs, they have chickens, they have rabbits, and so on. And um, uh, there are concerns, obviously, from from community members. It's, it's it could be a health and safety issue as as well. Um, and so I think we have to be a little bit uh, or, or become a little bit more proactive in relation to how we're going to address this now and in the future. Because you know you, there has to be a fine balance or a balance somewhere between um, individuals wanting to have those types of animals and then. You know the protection of property and the uh, the enjoyment of life for for your neighbor as well. Right, right. Um, you often I do come on here and it's always about dogs. And yeah. I mean a lot of the safety issues within the community generally uh, the focus is on uh, from dogs or the con calls come in in regards to dogs. It did the dog chased my child. The dog I saw a dog here, etc. You know there's a genuine concern. I can't freely walk because there's a dog on the road you know if it's a cat or a, a skunk you know there people will kind of just maneuver away from it a dog who seems to pose uh, in in the public's viewpoint uh, more of a, a risk or a threat so but it is generally um, you know we get calls for everything we get calls for everything we get you know help can we can you help uh, I have skunks under my porch you know there's traps um, S squirrels <laughs> squirrels <laughs> we do get those I have squirrels who've ma gotten into my roof and are now living in in my attic what can I do about that and if it's not something we would respond to where it can at least uh, give you a contact information for yeah. someone who deals with that in more of a, a professional capacity like ours is a well-rounded um, service we provide um, but it's something more specific where they're in your home then you would need someone geared specifically for that yeah okay you're listening to k1037 stay the with arda party line talk show Come on, welcome back to day the with arda party line talk show i'm your host lance stacy and joining me today are deidre white from animal protection as well as ron sky and we're talking about uh animal control law and i guess during the break i'm still can't get over the fact that um I, like I said, I've always focused on on the dog part, and and you made a comment, and I and I think that that's true of this community. Once you've had something entrenched in your mind, it's always going to be like that. Could be 50 years, 100 years before, you know, and uh, it, it's an issue. So if, if you could share with the listeners, because I think it's an important piece. Sure. Um, well, well, we were briefly discussing off air was the idea that um, this community, uh, and or maybe not this community per se, some individuals within this community still have the perception that we only deal with dogs, and that we're the dog catcher. Um, we it is in more of an old school uh, frame of thinking, but we do get people who are like dog catcher and. and that's in, in the mindset that that's all we do when we do deal with 
uh, many other animals, wildlife, cats. Cats have become a major issue uh, just because they procreate quite frequently and they, 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 they just take over. You know, if somebody doesn't get their cat fixed, they get annoyed with it, it goes outside, they don't, it comes back with fleas, they don't want it in the house anymore, okay, goodbye, and see you later. And next, you know, six months later, there's 75 more cats in your area. It's like quite, quite detrimental and it, it, it causes a lot of damage and can be a, a health risk too as well because the smell is quite strong. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, and I have a question from a listener. Why don't they pick up the loose dogs? And I've someone's called over 15 times. And while we're on the dog, we may as well uh, get that over with. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, well, I think that um, I'll go back to my policing days from years ago, you know, when we were partly responsible for, for doing that. It was, it was a, People may uh, also remember Harry Mayo, who was the that's, that's, yeah. infamous dog catcher in our community for a long time. Um, it is somewhat difficult, you know, to, to rope in an animal, if you would, uh, meaning a dog. Uh, um, and people may not believe it, but they come to recognize uh, authority as well. When they see in a police car or they see in the animal protection truck, they know. Um, and, you know, they, they scurry away. Um, so... Techniques can be used to uh, uh, to try and catch them, but they they are very elusive animals. And smart, I would oh, yeah. I, I yeah, gotta yeah. say that. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. Um, people like Ron did uh, mention is they do recognize vehicles, and a lot of people seem to kind of laugh at that concept, but it's actually true. Um, unless you've seen it with your own eyes, it can be difficult to believe, but it is. It is the case, you know, dogs take off as soon as they see you and they're quick, you know, and then they, you try to catch them and, you, you know, with other calls that may come in, you can't spend three hours chasing one dog, two dogs, three dogs. You can do your best. Um, if if uh, you're able to identify owners, then you try to deal with it on the owner's level to resolve the issue. So I guess based on, um, we'll, we'll shift gears a little bit, I want to talk about the existing law. With that, I, I take it there's no teeth to to it. Is that a nice way of putting it? You know, well, c- it, considering 1964. It, yeah, you know. Well, yeah, and it was it was it was a re- amended in 2002. And but in reality, it's it's very difficult to um, first you have to identify who the owner is and 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 so on. So uh, the process that and how it's identified within the law does make it very problematic for the animal control officers to prosecute, if you would. And the peop- and the individual or the entity that's responsible for the prosecution is the peacekeepers. So uh, peacekeepers got out of the dog catching business a few years ago, and it was, it was for a, a, a safety, health and safety issue, because you can't put an animal in the back of a, a police vehicle. You know, if it, it may uh, be carrying some type of disease or, or, or virus, and then you have human beings in there. So... Uh, the obvious responsibility was shifted to the animal control unit and, and we bolstered the unit, you know, by we have a new building now and you know, there's uh, more infrastructure in there for them to be able to do their, do- uh, their job. What we lack right now is effective legislation. Okay. And we want to shift the ownership uh, or the responsibility, I guess. is, is uh, it's, all, it's about owner responsibility. That's the bottom line. If you're a pet owner, you should be responsible. Uh, you have the right to own an animal that, that's, and, and, you know, everyone should enjoy that. But on the other side of the coin, the individual who doesn't own an animal also has the right to enjoy their lifestyle as well. So it's finding that balance, and it's about responsibility. Because I know just this morning on um, on social media, there was a picture of a dog who went and let a child walk by the road. And, you know, people were trying to post, I don't know whose dog it was, and I don't even know if it was ever even found, but that seems to be almost on a daily basis. Mm-hmm. And, and, and I guess part of it is, is the of the owner responsibility it's about the social socialization if you would of the animal to the surroundings to people to other animals as well and i think Dietrich can speak more from the professional side on that but uh you know i've been a, a dog owner for most of my life german shepherds and yeah. rottweilers yeah and and you know it's you a dog needs to be uh exercised you know if not then it 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 can become uh, aggressive and, right. I, and I think one of the things is, is people always say, oh, well, my dog is good. It won't hurt anybody. And exactly. I have to, so I yeah. know. Yeah. I, I've always had dogs myself. Yeah. And as they get older, they get crabbier. 
Mm -hmm. um, some don't like people. I have one dog that doesn't like people. <laughs> <laughs> My other baby, him, he thinks he's a baby, you know, so him, he likes everybody. But that's just the reality mm -hmm. of being a dog owner. Yeah. About three, four years ago when there was, a, you know, when an incident had come up, I said, well, that's it. I'm not going to let them loose no more. I'm going to put them there in a fenced area. They go out, they run, they play in the yard, they're in the house all the time. Then I have them for protection. That's why I have yeah. them. You know, but but when my dogs are in the yard, a whole bunch of other dogs are coming from the neighborhood mm -hmm. harassing my dogs in their fence trying to get in, you know, and, and that's the part where it's it gets common, a, it's a it, common it, problem. Yeah. Or sometimes it's kids coming by and kicking my fence. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. so what do you do then as a dog owner? I've asked this question before because yeah. what do I do? I'm being responsible with my pets mm -hmm. yeah you have the, the issue of, of dogs barking you know incessantly we have you know, that in our neighborhood too you know, not mine mine are in the house <laughs> you know, and and you know a dog is gonna bark you know it's 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 just part of their nature but when it's incessant like that there's there's you know there's an issue as yeah. an owner you should know there's an issue so either the dog's not getting enough exercise they're not socialized so you, there's an owner responsibility there to ensure right. that the dog is well taken care of. And a lot of people still have that way of thinking, like you you just mentioned, as uh, oh, there was an incident that caused your change in mind frame, yeah, yeah. which was I'm no longer going to let them out no. because yeah. you felt, oh, my dog's friendly, it's okay, they get their exercise while I let them out, um, it's okay, it's, right? And a lot of people still think that way. You know, uh, we get asked, asked often, why was my dog picked up? because it was loose but it's friendly it's okay right it's friendly i can let it run loose no no you're not <laughs> you can't be doing that um there's a responsibility if your dog needs exercise if your dog needs to take care of its business and say you don't want to have it done in your yard then you have that responsibility to put it on a leash and take it for a walk and then guess what it's not going to harass anybody because it's under the control of you as the owner and, and I guess that's even taking uh, training courses because they have courses for dog yes, owners yeah. to yeah. be able to, you know, to manage your dogs, you know. Yeah, that sometimes is a, something that is needed in regards to what type of breed you may have because you will have some dogs that are just natural pullers, um, maybe need a little more uh, authority figure uh, as the owner to kind of reiterate that this is what we're doing because some dogs are just very headstrong it's part of the breed um so you have to be able to be at the forefront to ensure that they're going to listen to you and then if you do if they don't then yes seeking out a trained a trained professional a trainer who can assist you with that so that way you're doing your due diligence as a responsible pet owner so I guess my next question comes to with uh, what is going to happen with this process? How is it going to evolve? And is it going to change your role as animal protection? Or is it going to maybe define it more? Because I think that's really where the issues are coming from. Uh, yeah, I think there's, there's, there's two um, uh, objectives, I guess, if you're, you're looking at it, yeah. the way we're looking yeah. at it. One is the, um, um, uh, obviously, the amendments to the law itself that would be, you know, uh, required. Um, and secondly is the, um, uh, I guess, scope of responsibility and authority from the animal control people. So, um, you know, we'll be doing some community surveys and kiosks and, and so on to try and gather that information. Um, we've developed a set of uh, questions and a questionnaire of an FAQ uh, section as well um, to try and get that feedback from the community. And you know what, we're, we're trying to get at least 500 responses so we can try and get a, a wide scope from the community. It might be a little bit aggressive, a little bit aggressive, but uh, uh, we think that, uh, you know, the more we get information from the general uh, population, and whether you're a dog owner or not, because there are two sides to the, that Absolutely. story, you know. Um, so the more information we get, the better informed we will be uh, when we start looking at amending uh, the law itself and developing the, the regulations uh, within and then that transfers to the responsibilities that um, a compliance officer or animal control officer will have so it, they, they do go hand in hand okay yeah because i think it's important to understand that you know because mm -hmm. it's a why are we doing it right you yeah. know right yeah. Yeah. i mean the like uh, ron had mentioned earlier it initially began as a letter that was sent 
with the amendments or looking at the change to the law. And that's something that needs to be done. I mean, it doesn't reflect the community's needs or responsibilities in regards to being uh, a pet owner, not just a dog owner, yeah. but we do often hear more in regards to dog issues, loose dog issues, uh, attacks or bites. Uh, those things seem to make uh, the headlines, if you want to call, or the posts, a lot of the posts on social media. Um, so you want to be able to address those things. Um, we will be, often we get a lot of people who call in with their frustrations. That is a, f a, mo a form of feedback. Um, so now is your opportunity that w as we move forward with this process, with we'll be having the survey, we'll be having the kiosks. We want your opinion. We want to know what you think in regards to you know certain or aspects of the law that we're looking at amending, and uh, that way we can get uh, the best information in regards to what the community wants. And I mean, we talked about it, and, and if you look at, and I've seen this actually in social media as well, uh, wild animals going after chickens, uh, getting into chicken coops, um, you know, and often wondered what happens with that. Yeah, well, I mean, we, we've seen an increase, uh, according to animal control, on, on wild animals, yes. you know, coming closer into the community. Um, and then, as I mentioned earlier, with the uh, individuals wanting to get more into a subsistence living, if you would, so there's... There's predators that are around that are that are looking for that, so it it increases uh, you know a concern you know of uh, other animals that may be coming to grab your chicken or uh, whatever the case may be. So we have to look at it from a from a, a bigger perspective now, yeah. rather than just focusing on dogs because yeah. it's not just about dogs no. now. No, it's it's much larger than that, and uh, uh, we'll see where it takes us when we get you know when we, we start consulting with the community. You know, and then it'll uh, hopefully it'll give us a, a broader range of what we need to do. So let me ask some questions. Uh, what are some of the things you're looking at in terms of community feedback? Maybe that might help our listeners get a handle on, you know, what are some of the things you're looking at? Well, we want to we want to see what people what would they want to see um, as your ideal um, animal and uh, community member relations within the community. How does everybody? get along together you know uh, in the regards to safety in regards to responsibility in regards to you know uh, qu even quality of life you know generally a lot of people do own pets because it's their companion um, you know it's or it's a therapy uh, component to it so we want everyone to be able to c get along well and not and ha not have to worry about issues you know um, I, I guess on the odd occasion you may experience something as a human error can occur um, but that's that's kind of what we want is just to have everyone be able to get along responsibility responsible pet ownership is is the goal uh, but you have to uh, have proper legislation in regards to that um, regulations and along with an educational component because some people still have that old frame of mind and thinking and it's quite difficult to get that mind frame to change over the years we have seen a change um i believe when you were on with uh, lloyd you guys did mention where before you didn't see people walking dogs on leashes no. now i see it quite often which um, you know makes it <laughs> makes me smile <laughs> because it's like you wouldn't have seen that a few years ago so there is a shift there is a shift there is a, a, a positive change within this community in regards to how people view uh, the responsibility uh, of owning an animal but it hasn't changed quick enough or large enough for everyone to be getting along and uh, everything to be peaceful and safe because it seems right now it like kind of uh, magnified, I guess, and not just with the dogs, but with all animals, you mm -hmm. know, and, and, and we make uh, a joke about the pig on the highway and, and you know, some people's horses, you know, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. uh, getting loose and things. And it's usually pretty good because mm -hmm. people will see, hey, that's my pet and, you know, can get it resolved. But what happens when that doesn't happen, you that's know, right. and what's you know, in place? A large you know? animal like that on a highway, yeah. you know, it could cause an accident and then there's other you know, serious things that may happen in relation to that. I mean, the, the, if a horse gets bumped, yeah, you know, and it, it did happen, and so uh, what do we do? What if we can't find the owner? Yeah. You know, then we have to get up a pin. We got to put the animal somewhere. 
So, and but there's no provisions in the that current legislation that, right? that addresses those things. How are we supposed to proceed? I mean, there's a common sense aspect to it, you know, that, that yeah. we can all take. Um, but it's it's becoming a little bit more involved now, you know, and, and uh, uh, as I said, people trying to get back to a subsistence living, if you would. Uh, what does it entail? You know, as, if you know your your neighbor, uh, if I want to have ten pigs in a, yeah. in a residential area, is that okay? You know, if I want to have a, a, a a chicken ranch in 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 my little quarter acre, <laughs> right? Yeah, right. Well, how how are, and it's you know we, we need to address those things you know in a sensible way in, yeah. and and try and find a balance. And wouldn't that also be like supposing people want to do that but don't take care of it? I'm I'm thinking of a dog who gets tied up, right? And no one bothers with it. Or if you have chickens and you're not cleaning up the coop, and you know, to me, it, it can go a whole bunch of different places. Well, that's and the there's part nothing of, there. Yeah, that's part of the responsible ownership that we're looking at. You know, within yeah. the the legislation itself, and and some of the questions are geared, you know, to to that to see what the community thinks, uh, you know, in in relation to that. So I'll, I'm going to ask a question in terms of it. So how are you specifically going to get people to participate? That That's my next question. Uh, well, Deidre. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, d- I did mention earlier that we will be doing a survey. It will be launching on the 26th of, Nove- uh, of November. And we will also be set up at a kiosk at the uh, bank and post office from 830 to 4 to pull those people in please come and fill it out um, you know ask any questions provide feedback um, the more in, uh, feedback we get the the more we can you know apl- potentially apply it in regards to you know amendments to the law um, we, we're on the talk show yeah, as of yeah. now we will I'm be sure on again we'll be back a couple more times we'll be I'm back again ones, yes. yeah. <laughs> we'll be back again um, there's going to be uh, you know uh, ads within the local uh, papers there's going to be um, you know, with those same ads along the lines in social media, um, you know, get to, to you kind of give uh, information, but at the same time, you want people to give the, their feedback on stuff they see, you know, articles and, um, you know, segments for uh, KTV segments, etc., just to, to kind of give that information out and at the same time invite people to take part because their opinion matters it's important so how will people be able to actually do the survey is it online is it going to be you have to go somewhere or do an interview or um we will be having them printed they will be available uh at the kiosk uh for the the dates that were set up there which are the 26th and december 4th those are our kiosk dates along with we will also have it at our office at the animal protection office you want to come in in person fill it out take a few minutes maybe have a chat you know expressing your your how how you feel the situation in regards to uh, animals in the community uh, any concerns you may have and then i do believe it, it will be available online okay. yes okay, for perfect. the for community members yes okay you're listening to k1037 stay the watarda party line talk show Come on. welcome back to day the watarda party line talk show i'm your host len stacy and today joining me in studio are uh, ron sky and deidre white and we're talking about a survey on animal control law i guess since we're on the question uh, on the on the topic of law um i'm is it safe to assume that you're also going to be looking at um the ticket part i think ron you mentioned it like what what like fines and things and yeah, well, well, what would that entail? Well, the process right now is that the, the only ones who can file a, a charge, if you want, for under the current law are the peacekeepers. Um, and the peacekeepers uh, are, are really not responsible for the law. It's, it's been uh, hived off for animal control. So it becomes uh, time-consuming um, for, you know, for an officer to, to f- make a report based on an animal control uh, request. Um, the fines that are also incorporated within the uh, uh, the current legislation are a little bit outdated. So we're looking at modernizing, if you would, you know, the uh, the whole process itself. So it, it comes out to almost like a statement of offense, you know, where if an animal control officer or an inspector down the road uh, observes an infraction, you know, dog's tagged, it's got his collar, is able to find out who the owner is, then it's simply issuing a ticket rather than of charge and time, you know, uh, you know, going on that route. I mean, that's that's the last option we'd like to use. 
compliance and responsibility is what we're aiming for along with the educational component. And we think that's key in relation to being an, a responsible owner is educate yourself and, and educate the community as well. And, and I guess I think the most important thing out of this will be the clarification as the role of the animal protection workers because right now it, it, it's fuzzy. You know, and, and, and I think that's one of yeah, the biggest things, you they're know. They're responsible for a large area, if you look <laughs> yeah. at it. I mean, the calls that come in, yeah. uh, you know, from, from, from the cat, the dog, the horse, the cow, the pig, the chicken, uh, the mice, the raccoons, uh, the squirrels, and the rats, you know. <laughs> and so that's, that's, they get the calls. They, they, have to, they have to feel them. So some of them are, are, should be within the responsibility of animal control. Some may belong to an exterminator, which are outside the realm of animal control. I mean, if you have a rat issue, it's probably a, a you know a health and safety issue in relation to maybe you have garbage outside, or so you have to clean up the garbage. It's not animal control. No, let's get to the source. So again, it's about being responsible, you know, for you know yourself and your surroundings. Uh, so uh, we're going to try and whittle that down, if you would, <laughs> yeah, into yeah. What, what animal control is really responsible for. And then there might be a hive off down the road in relation to uh, maybe developing a game warden component, ah. which, could be, which would be able to look at the, the, the wild aspect, if you would, of, uh, uh, of animal control. Do you get a lot of calls on the wild animals? Because it seems like, you know, people are seeing more foxes. People have, have talked about um, coyotes. Coyotes, not, You know, yeah. if that was even true. Or, yeah. you know, uh, what was the other one? The cats there. Oh, uh, the fisher, fisher cats. The fisher, fisher cats. cats. People that have, e- have either spotted them or they do hear them at night, uh, which I've heard is quite terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a pleasant sound from what I understand. Yeah. I've never heard it, but... Uh, yeah, we do get we do get quite a bit of calls. Usually, they're more along the lines of them being uh, a nuisance. Uh, it's under their shed. It's under their porch. Um, it's digging in my garbage. I'm afraid it has rabies, and I have children who play in the backyard. Groundhogs. We do get calls for groundhogs because they can be aggressive uh, if they feel threatened and if children are playing in the backyard, we don't know what that groundhog may perceive those children as, right? So the concerns are warranted, but at the same time, they were here first. We've encroached on where they live, so it's more about um, respecting um, you know, and educating yourself. Um, if you don't create a hospitable environment for a wild animal, guess what? You won't become a hospitable environment. And for I wonder a wild if that's because more people are going out to the farm area, opening up. You know, because it seems like they are. I, I mean, you've heard it now and then, but it seems to be more hearing about it. Yeah, I, I you know, uh, maybe that's one statistic that we we overlooked in relation to location of calls yeah. and the type of call, and maybe yeah. we. Uh, um, we're looking at buying a software program or <laughs> haven't bought it yet that will be able to, you know, manage all the statistical information as far as the calls. Yeah. And, and it's, I'm sure it could be adapted to yeah. the type of call and location, yeah. which would uh, assist in, you know, yeah, having, it, making informed decisions down the road. The incidences occur in town as well. Yeah. I wouldn't have, like what Ron spoke of in regards to statistical information, I'm sure most of the calls do occur more on the outskirts um, but they do occur right in town uh, you know squirrels squirrels are everywhere uh, skunks uh, raccoons rac- raccoons are basically f- looking for food uh, garbage day is every Friday and I'm sure they know they must that. feast <laughs> <laughs> and they're gonna come out in droves you know uh, if you're making if you're leaving it out without a cover you know and that's the that's the educational component it's not just um, oh this is your animal control or animal protection's responsibility, come remove it from me because it's, it's, I don't want it here. Well, there's a due diligence that's in play, that should be in place before we would need to potentially remove it is, you know what, if it's under your shed, then you're making uh, necessary provisions to that shed to ensure it can't fit under there. It's not going to dig under there, you know, um, uh, got covering your garbage, you know, um, whatever you need to do uh, preventatively, and you won't have an issue. I've lived in the Lot 106 in South Texas for three years now. I've had no issues. I even put up a garden and a shed this year. I've had nothing, knock on wood, right? right? But right. I'm right. also but practicing preventative measures. Yeah. Meanwhile, I do have other members of my neighborhood who have experienced issues with wildlife. So are they maybe not practicing the same practices? Perhaps, but... 
uh, preventative measures and, uh, and an educational component is So is I guess key. that's going to be the critical part to hear is the education process of, of, for any type of animal, wildlife, dogs, cats, you know, yes. whatever, because I think the key to it is, is the prevention aspect. Yes. Yeah. Uh, there's an educational component to any effective uh, animal control law in municipalities or or communities involve educational components and a proper legislative process yes okay my next question is um, would it be uh, similar to uh, regular law and I guess Ron you might be able to answer it like say a first offense second offense and you know th would it be a progressive type it, of thing that you're it, looking at it's there's a possibility there yeah uh, I mean and once we'll, we'll I guess probably decide that once we get the feedback on how the community feels as far as uh, um, sanctions, yeah. you know, are, are concerned. Um, but uh, responsibility is key and education is key. And I think the animal uh, uh, control group over the last three years has, has done a, uh, a very diligent job in trying to educate the community and, and providing information. Um, but we still, you know, obviously need to... Uh, complement that with effective legislation yeah. for them as well yeah. you know you, you need both to go hand in hand uh and as i said this, the last thing you want to do is to have to use the enforcement side you yeah know? so if we if we key on the education you know and and, and owner's rights and or responsibilities as well uh then we should you know try to minimize you know issues within the community because i'm also thinking you know on the other end of it when you have animals that are being abused you know what about the animals rights you know and that's, that's a mm -hmm. possibility too yeah and that's th that would fall under the animal control realm you know within the uh, within the regulation i mean there's also a provision within the criminal code for cruelty right. to animals yes and then it becomes a policing issue but yeah. you know the 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 uh notification would probably come from animal control so would so then you would be looking you know we would be looking that far out too mm -hmm. which it depends on what the community wants right mm -hmm. oh definitely yeah. yeah yeah okay i have a comment from a listener uh she says fisher cats are dangerous says her cat was attacked and she had to put her cat down because mm -hmm. of fisher cat and I, I just hear them i've n you know hear people talk about them but yes. you know it makes you worry about you know children or or like this one a cat you mm -hmm. know a domestic right. cat Right. Um, they are uh, present within the community based off of people's uh, experiences with them. Um, it's, it, they, are, they do live here. Um, I don't think they generally come out other than at night. Um, I mean, if we do see uh, a, a, an increase of sightings or issues with them, then you would, I mean, basic, uh, I guess you would say, understanding is then you don't put your cat out at night i mean it sounds it sounds almost like it's it's not it, we're, we're bl or it may sound like i'm we're blaming the yeah. owner which we're not it's yeah. just as your responsibility as your cat if you want to safeguard your cat nothing's going to happen to it if it remains indoors you know um, a lot of places uh actually uh have enacted uh curfews on cats where you're not you're not allowing your cat outdoors uh, after a certain hour or at all in some places because it just causes issues where they're causing damage um, you know the the urine smell that you just can't get out um, they're destroying blinds or, or or screen doors you know and then but guess what they won't cause that if they're at home with you right right hmm sounds like this is going to be a big project but I, I think right ron's got the right idea about trying to go after 500 community members because it, it's a hot topic it's a lot of and takes a big picture it's not as small as just the dogs and i'm not minimal mm. minimalizing no, no. the issue of the dogs at well, all it seems that there's always a, the uh the hot seasons you know we get the spring and then yeah. the fall it's it's uh the dogs go in heat and then you know you, you get the influx of calls and then the the dogs follow the children to schools and then the school calls because there's dogs and the, so it's it's like a never-ending story and that's still happening and need, and yeah, it's still it still <laughs> happens on okay. occasion yeah. yes it's a friendly dog that goes outside wait, waits with the child right lives with the child and decides that it's going to follow the bus and perfectly friendly dog but should it really be there no it shouldn't be so it's it's very cut and dry your dog should be home if you're taking it anywhere 
it's under your control on a leash um, or in a fenced in area which one day hopefully we will see uh, yeah. we have uh, had many people express uh, the want or the need for a dog park um, so that's when Lloyd was on I did get some people who inboxed me and said would the community consider doing a dog park right. you know we, we're doing all kinds of other parks we do touch on that within our survey so it'll be nice to get some feedback in yeah, regards to that yes some other uh, ideas you know for making it to be uh, a good thing for pet owners yep. mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and this isn't just something that affects pet owners it affects the community whether you own a, an animal or not you 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 have had an experience maybe pa, more, more than likely negative uh, in regards to uh, an, someone who owns an animal and you want to see a, a reach a point in 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 your life where you don't have to have that experience anymore you know you can walk freely to to the post you know we have had people um who've expressed that they don't walk in the community anymore because they don't feel it's safe or uh i walk down the i drive home after work and i can see people who walk but they're walking with a golf stick or a hockey stick or a stick in general because they don't feel safe within their community and you want to create laws that allow people to walk freely and safely within your community and that makes it makes a lot of sense really because it, it's not been no it's uh the you know the attitude is it's 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 i have a dog and i you know it's they're, they're supposed to run free okay i i can agree with that but you also have a responsibility that you know the other individuals have the right to also enjoy the streets and the community they live in as well their yards yeah when your dog goes poop on someone else's yard, they mm-hmm. never will never go in your yard, but <laughs> they will go in your neighbor's yeah, yeah. yard. And we do touch on that too. Yeah, I was gonna yeah, ask we do touch on that. Uh, we do have people who've inquired about who's responsible. If I don't own any dogs, but right. why am I? Ha- why do I have to clean it up? Yes, I'm going to clean up because it's my yard, but I don't own any dogs. And I and if you happen to know it's 100% this person's dog, then are they responsible for picking yeah. that up? Yeah. And they would be, yes. Yeah. We would like to see it created to the point where you have that responsibility. And very clear to who's responsible for yes. what, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Mm. The idea of uh, along the lines of looking at fines as opposed to having to charge somebody is you happen to see somebody or uh, doing something, or running at large, you wouldn't necessarily have to catch the dog if you know exactly who it belongs to. You're merely just providing proof that this dog was running at large, not in your yard. Here's a ticket. Okay. You educate them on a better way to can close them if it happened to break loose because that can happen too. It's not necessarily a habitual thing, right? No. Or someone who intends to let their dog roam, but that's the educational component as well. Is um, you know you fi- you want to fi- you're going to find them or ticket them but then you're also going to educate them yeah. and hopefully that education registers and you don't have to have that experience again and I, and I think that's what I, I'm a dog owner and you know I keep them in the fence and and that's my biggest fear that they're going to get out they're going to get shot they're going to bite somebody there something's going to happen and I've done everything I can but someone else has come and unlocked my fence and that has happened Mm -hmm. i wake up in the morning my fences are open i'm very fortunate that i have excellent neighbors as soon as someone finds out they're out i got a text or got a you know that people will have good neighbors that will help take care of it but there's other people who are doing stuff to my dogs Mm -hmm. you know and that Mm -hmm. for me is my always been my question what do i do if i've done everything but somebody else is uh harassing my dogs well there's an aspect of, um, of one of the laws out in Calgary where you're looking at the circumstances surrounding an incident. Yeah. So um, they take into account, um, you know, the situation. If they were being harassed, yeah. well, then not. I don't want to say, though, that child or that person deserved to be bit, but no. obviously it was retaliative as yeah. opposed to just pure aggression. Absolutely. So, you know, like to put the potential for, you know, something like that where you're... It, investigating and examining the incident yeah. and what happened and why it happened and determining the best course of action to to ensure it doesn't happen again. Because I, I guess that's another piece to this, that there are people who are cruel to animals, period, and just not nice. We'll just kick them, hit them, shoot them, you know, and there should be some responsibility on that side well, as well. I'm looking definitely. at the whole thing. Oh, I'm, definitely. I'm, you know. yeah. Yeah, you yes, know, there for are sure. people who may act out in, in that way. Yeah. And I mean, every circumstance is different. Like if an animal is, is, or a dog gets loose, I mean, 
uh, you know, as Deidre pointed out, I mean, the dog might have just busted the cage, you know, yeah, jumped over happens. a cage, so it's not something that's habitual. No. So you try and educate on, on, on uh, you know, trying to find a more suitable cage for, right. for, for the dog. Maybe I have to find double it. locks for mine you know? <laughs> so no one so, can open them. <laughs> so there's, you know, it's, it's on a case-by-case case yeah. basis. And common sense has to prevail. Okay. Um, we're at the end. Maybe just a reminder of the dates. and I uh, Right. Okay, so we will be having the launch of the survey on the, uh, November 26th. We will also be set up uh, at a kiosk that day uh, between the bank and the post from 8.30 to 4 with the surveys for people to fill out. Um, we will also have them uh, in our possession at our office every day from uh, 8 to 4. Um, if you want to come in and fill it out that way, uh, we, we want your opinion. We want uh, input. The more, the better. We uh, over the years, the people have expressed a lot of frustrations, uh, a lot of opinions, um, and now is your time to to have that be heard. So uh, please do come by and fill out the our, the survey when we launch it. Thank you guys for dropping in. Thank you, Ron. Thank okay, you, Deidre. So and I'm sure I'm going to have you back on again on this topic. <laughs> no this, is, this one's not going away no. quite yet. <laughs> uh, coming up tomorrow uh, on Day the Watar, MCK Friday, I'll be joined by Chief Lindsay Laborn. Up next with the 1 o'clock news is Kathleen Specker. Have a great afternoon, everybody. Onigiwahi.